In this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is looking at solving systems of equations using the substitution method, which is an algebraic way of doing it. And in the previous two lessons, what we looked at is solving systems of equations using a, a graphical method. Uh, first of all, we looked at doing it by hand, and then second lesson, we looked at, at solving systems using a graphing calculator. In this particular lesson, we're going to get the same results. We're looking for points of intersection of the functions, uh, we're going to find those points algebraically, and this method is going to be called the su substitution method. Uh, so in this example, we're going to solve the system of equations algebraically using the substitution method. Uh, the substitution method, the first step is to isolate a variable in one of the two functions. And, and because uh, what we want to do is eliminate a variable, you don't want to isolate x in this particular, in the second or red function, because uh, if we isolate x, we'd still have it as a function of x squared. You couldn't isolate x individually. Uh, the easiest variable to isolate in either of these two functions uh, is the y in the first function, because there's no coefficient. So uh, it's much easier to isolate, because you won't have to divide by anything. So what I'm going to do here is isolate y in the first function first. Okay, uh, so after I do that, I have 5x minus y minus 10 equals 0. Uh, if I just add y to both sides, I would end up having y is equal to 5x minus 10. Uh, well, in this particular case, what we have is y is equal to the expression 5x minus 10. So we can uh, replace or substitute the expression for y with 5x minus 10 in the other function, and that is the process of substitution. So I'm just going to replace y in the second function with 5x minus 10. Uh, what you're going to see happening here is now what we've done is eliminated the variable y, in which case now we can actually solve for the variable x. Uh, so this is just going to be a quadratic function of x squared, or quadratic equation x squared plus x uh, minus 10x plus 20 is equal to 0. Collect like terms and put into standard form. We have x squared minus 9x plus 20 is equal to 0. Uh, you could solve for x using the quadratic formula, but the first thing you want to try to do is factor. And this one is completely factorable as x minus 5 and x minus 4, which would give us two solutions of x is equal to 4 and also x is equal to 5. Uh, at this point, we're not completely done. Well, all we've done is found the coordinates are the, the x-coordinates of each of the intersection points. And if I look at this graph, all we've done now is actually found out that this point right here, it's hard to see uh, on the graph because sometimes graphs are difficult to, to solve with. Uh, but this point here is going to be 4 and something because you know an x-coordinate is 4. You also another, know another point of intersection is going to be 5 and something. You could estimate using the graph, but we want to solve algebraically. Uh, to solve for the value of, of y, all we need to do is substitute this value of x that we found into either one of the functions because the point must belong on both of the functions since it's a point of intersection. So just choose the easier one. Uh, I generally find linear functions are easier to substitute into. So if I replace x in that first function with 4 and solve for y, I will get a solution. Uh, so I have 20 minus y minus 10 is equal to 0. If I add y to both sides and collect like terms, I'll have 10 is equal to y, or in other words, y is equal to 10. So the coordinate 4, 10 is a solution. And you can see over here, that point looks like it's at roughly 4, 10. To get the other solution, all we do is substitute 5 again into either one of the functions. Uh, I'm going to substitute it in for x again in the first function. And as we solve for y, we'll have 25 minus y minus 10 is equal to 0. And after I add y, I'm going to get a solution of 15 is equal to y. Or in other words, the coordinate, when I substitute 5 in, uh, gets me a y-coordinate of 15. So my two solutions to this problem are 410 and 515. All right, let's look at a word problem and how this applies to word problems. Uh, this word problem says this. The sum of a smaller integer and twice the larger integer is 37. When the square of the smaller integer is decreased by 3 times the larger, the result is 82. Determine the numbers using the substitution method. Uh, there is an alternative method, which we'll look at in the next lesson. That's why I'm specifying using the substitution method. Well, in this particular case, what we want to do is, first of all, identify or represent uh, what we're solving for. I'm going to let x be my smaller integer. And I'm going to let y be my larger integer. Okay. Uh, next, what I can do is just represent a system of equations. The smaller, the sum of the smaller integer and twice the larger. So if I wanted to represent that, it would be the sum of the smaller plus twice the larger is equal to 37. 
Uh, and my second equation would be when the square of the smaller integer, so when I square the smaller integer, is decreased by 3 times the larger, I get a result of 82. It says determine the numbers. Well, we've got our system, and in this particular case, since we're using the substitution method, you want to ask yourself which of these variables is the easiest to isolate. In this particular case, the x in the first equation is the easiest to isolate because you don't need to divide by anything. Uh, x squared, you can't really, that's not an isolated single variable, that's an isolated x squared. Um, so you want to isolate x in the blue function or equation. Uh, so if I subtract 2x, I would have x is equal to 37 minus 2y. And now since that expression is equivalent to x, I can substitute that expression into that function right here, into the second function. I'd have 37 minus 2y squared minus 3y is equal to 82. And just recall that anything squared is that times itself. So this binomial product here, uh, <clears throat> you must multiply all four parts. Uh, let me just get to my calculator here. All right, so we have 1,369 minus 74y minus 74y plus 4y squared minus 3y is equal to 82. If we start collecting like terms, we would have 4y squared. Sorry, this should say 74y up here. Uh, <clears throat> minus 151y, and then after I subtract 82 from both sides, my constant here, because I want to make one side equal 0, uh, 1369 minus the constant of 82 is 1287, so that would be plus 1287 is equal to 0. A few ways we could solve for y in this case. Uh, one way is to try and factor it, which would be very difficult, so the second way would be to use the quadratic formula. Uh, the quadratic formula says that y would be equal to negative b, which is negative, negative 151, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 151 squared, minus the product of 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 1,287. And that's all over a denominator of 2a, which is 2 times 4. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm just going to start solving up here. Uh, so we have 151 plus or minus the square root of, and if I do 151 squared, that gives me 22,801. That would be minus a product of 4 times 4 times 1287, and that gives me 20592, 20,592, and that's all over a denominator of 8, because 2 times 4 times 8. So we have 151 plus or minus the square root of, and if I do 22801 minus 20592, I end up getting 2209, which is a perfect square. You'll see that in just one moment. So if I take the square root of 2209, I get 47. So it's 151 plus or minus 47 all over 8. So there's two possible solutions for y. y is either equal to 151 plus 47 all over 8, or y is equal to 151 minus 47 all over 8. Uh, and let's just go ahead and find both solutions. If I do 151 plus 47, calculate my numerator, divide it by 8, I get 24.75. And if I do 151 minus 47 and divide by 8, I get 13. Uh, so in this particular case, we have two possible solutions for the larger integer, either 24.75 or 13. I uh, just have to be careful. It says the sum of the smaller integer and twice the larger integer. Integers are whole are whole numbers, not decimals or, or fractions at all. Uh, so in this particular case, we know that 24.75 is not an integer. Okay, uh, so our only possible solution for the larger integer is 13. Now to find the smaller integer, we do what we just did in the previous lesson, which was substitute that value into either one of your original two functions. I'm going to substitute it into my first function. So we have x minus, or sorry, plus 2 times 13 is equal to 37. So we have x plus 26 equals 37, which gives us a total of, after I subtract 26, x is equal to 11. So the last thing to do is to state uh, in sentence form, larger number is 13, smaller number is 11, and that's it.